It is that time. The Apex Legends 2021 Movement Guide is finally here. Welcome or welcome back, everyone. My name is Tim Provision, and today we are going to go over all the various movement techniques to help elevate your movement above the competition. There might be no game out there where movement is as important as it is in Apex Legends. We are going to start with some of the basics and work our way up from there. There is a lot for us to cover, so let's jump right into it. As with most things in Apex Legends, there are a lot of ways to do various things. Because of this, there are nearly an infinite amount of things to cover with movement in Apex. So if I miss something and you'd like an answer on it, or for it to be covered in a future video, drop a comment down below. If you do like this video, slam that like button, and I appreciate your support. We also stream on Twitch nearly daily at 8pm Eastern if you do have any more questions regarding movement in Apex Legends. The key thing to remember about Apex Legends is that momentum is key. The more momentum you can keep, the faster you'll move on to your enemies, and in turn, this will make you much harder to hit. This also combines with game sense, overall knowledge of movement in Apex Legends, and positioning. Not every movement technique will be used in every game, and you really need to play a lot to understand when to link these movement types together to make yourself harder to hit and give yourself better positioning in fights. Most people think movement is all about getting the right positioning to hit some solid shots, but it is also equally important to remember that movement is also what will help you stay alive. So we are on the same page, let's start with some of the very basics, as there might be a couple obvious things that you are overlooking. The most basic and important movement technique in Apex Legends is the combination of running, sliding, and jumping, as well as keeping your guns down and running with your hands or fists up as much as possible within reason. Slide boosting will give you a fairly large movement boost in speed, and you should be doing this not only in fights, but when rotating around the map, so you can rotate faster. While it's obvious, you should also be putting your guns down to close the gap as much as possible, and even doing this in a fight if it allows for it. Speed means efficiency, and putting your weapons away is one of the ways to achieve this. Take care not to get caught with your guard down though. In case you are brand new to Apex Legends, a simple slide boost is accomplished by sprinting, sliding, and then going right back into a sprint. Sometimes jumping after the slide is also a useful way to give yourself an extra momentum boost. Second to this, sliding off of objects will also give you a similar type of momentum and speed boost and is another great way to throw yourself into an engagement or get some extra speed to chase someone down that might be eluding you. Since we are talking about sliding in Apex Legends, another great scenario for sliding is sliding down larger or longer hills. This will obviously keep your momentum up and can be used to get you out of or into fights quicker. I often like to combine sliding down hills and sliding off of objects at the same time. This way I can keep as much momentum as possible. If the hill is long enough, I like to often look backwards up the hill as I am sliding down it. Not only can you get shots on your enemies that could be chasing you, you also keep your momentum up with that slide. And finally, and one of the biggest things with sliding for me, on larger hills, you can also heal up or shield up while sliding down that hill and keeping a fair amount of your momentum up. This is a great way to save some downtime and keep the match flowing. This moves us onto a tip that I deem slightly more advanced or intermediate, and that is sliding backwards in a fight to make yourself more elusive. Of course, you will get a bit more of a boost when sliding backwards off of a corner of an object, but you can also get a solid boost from just sliding backwards, even if it is on flat ground. I often like doing this when I am in a close range SMG or hipfire AR fight. If I'm corner peeking around a box or some other type of cover, I'll slide backwards from that corner, making me harder to hit as a target and allowing me to get some solid shots on my enemy. I often use this towards the end of a fight as it can be pretty revealing once your backward slide ends, depending on the specifics of your situation. However, you can also use this to put yourself back into cover if needed. One bonus tip for you, while it's not directly related with sliding and it's a bit more of an obvious tip, but one that some people might miss, you are quieter when walking in Apex. This can sometimes allow you to get the surprise and get the drop on some enemies, just by walking up behind that enemy team that may be camping in a position that makes them put their guard down. While sliding is the most important movement technique in Apex Legends, climbing does have its benefits as well. There are many locations in Apex Legends that can be climbed and that are underutilized. Try to be creative with your climbs, as the more creative you are, the more likely you are to confuse your enemies and get the drop on them. First off, climbing is a fantastic way to get a height advantage in a close range fight. 
Having height in Apex Legends is fairly important because you can use whatever you are standing on to cover portions of your body, making yourself harder to hit, and possibly revealing more of the enemy depending on the situation. Always try to get the edge on enemies by climbing onto objects and staying above them. Show patience and time your shots for maximum effectiveness. Having height allows you to time your shots in your favor, not your enemies, as they are really just waiting for you to make that peak rather than the opposite. The second tip for climbing is again an obvious one, but it is worth mentioning that climbing can be used to get to many hard to reach spots across a plethora of locations on all the maps. The big one that always comes to mind are the buildings in Fragment East and Fragment West on World's Edge, as well as Skyhook. Many of these buildings are accessible through creative climbing strategies. Always be on the lookout for things that can break your climb, or in other terms, allow you to reset the maximum climbing height allowing you to climb up walls and areas most players may not think about. This includes many of the rocky areas and buildings alike. While most may think climbing is a fairly linear tool, you can also climb and move your legends slightly sidewards. This should be used to mount particular areas that could be harder to climb or are just out of reach from a normal climb. This allows you to unlock a number of useful climbs across the maps. Climbing can also be used to peek over ledges. You do not need to mount that ledge that you are trying to climb up on top of. If you stop your climb right near the top of an object, your legend will actually hang there, and this can allow you to get some sneaky intel on enemies that may be unaware of where you are. But as always, be mindful of what your enemies are looking at, and don't get dome shot by that Kraber. The last two climbing techniques have to do directly with engagements. The first is to climb up a wall with a window and pop fire into that window. This really only works great with a shotgun. However, I find it most useful at getting grenades to go deeper into buildings than maybe it would be possible from the ground. I seldomly use this, but this is something I have in the back of my arsenal against teams that could be camping up in buildings with something like caustic gas or rampart barriers. Many less experienced players will not expect you to be doing this, but be mindful of your enemies because experienced players can get some really easy shots on you. This is a fairly difficult skill to perfect as you are required to climb while aiming and lining up your shot or grenade. And as soon as your climb releases, you throw that grenade or shoot your shots through that window. I recommend trying this by climbing up the rocks behind the bots in firing range and shooting a few shots or throwing grenades at them when you stop your climb. Finally, you can also use your climbing to just evade and confuse enemies. What I mean by this is if you are expecting an enemy to push you and maybe you don't have anywhere you can go quickly, or if you are just in a fight, you can climb up the side of a wall and as they move into your location, you may just be outside of their field of view and it will allow you to turn the tide and get some shots on unexpected enemies that are confused as to where you went and how you just disappeared. I again don't use this too often, but it is something I find can turn the fights in my favor. I find this technique to be most useful on the map King's Canyon, as the buildings are there are much narrower and much taller than some of the buildings on World's Edge and Olympus, allowing you to get kind of more above the doorways in a lot of those buildings. Next up, let's start to discuss some of the more advanced or intermediate movement techniques that are useful in a lot of engagements. Most of these have to do with making yourself harder to hit as a legend. The first has to do with shoulder or side peeking. This is the art of bouncing in and out from behind cover to make yourself more elusive. This maximizes your damage while also minimizing the amount of damage coming in. This is generally more useful in closer range fights, but can also be used in mid range fights as well. This is exactly as it sounds. You are using the wall you are standing next to as cover. You bob in and out of this wall, shooting and then protecting yourself from returning fire. This is most effective I find with weapons like the Wingman, Massive or Hemlock, but it can also be effective with other weapons as well. You can and should be doing this pretty much on any object that has enough cover to protect most of your body. Gibraltars specifically need to perfect this as there are many times where you will be fighting in and around your dome shield in this manner. However, I still recommend everyone to be well versed in this type of fighting because Gibraltar is a heavily used legend at the moment. This type of engagement is a lot like a chess match, who can outwit the other and who has more refined accuracy and movement. This is something that you can practice in some aspects in the firing range, bounce in and out of cover and shoot those dummies. You can also combine this with a crouch to make yourself even more random and harder to hit as well. However, I recommend just getting your straight fighting down at first and then incorporating the crouch when you do feel comfortable and confident with the basics. This brings us to crouch spamming and strafing in a one-on-one -on -one fight where yourself and the enemy are completely exposed. 
In a lot of ways, this technique here is very similar to the previously discussed side peeking, but this time you need to be rapidly crouching up and down while moving to the left and moving to the right. This action makes your hitbox much more random and moves your head around to try and prevent the enemy from keeping a lock on your head. This is all about making yourself as hard to hit and as random as possible, and this random movement is the way to do it. If you can combine this with movement mimicking, you will make it much easier for yourself to hit shots on your enemy. So what is movement mimicking? This is the action of moving yourself in the same pattern your enemy is. This way you barely will need to adjust your reticule as your movement and strafing is doing all this aiming for you. This can make quick work of enemies since you are virtually locked onto the enemies through your movement and doesn't require a lot of mechanical aiming skill. Be mindful of this technique though, as enemies can easily shoot back to you if they realize you are doing this. And again, this makes crouch spamming really important to keep your movement random. While the best way to practice this is on live enemies, you can do this in some aspects by just crouch spamming and strafing while shooting at the bots in firing range. This will at least get you in the mindset of how it feels to crouch spam and strafe while shooting. The final portion of becoming harder to hit for the intermediate skill level is a skill known as wall jumping. This is a fairly simple thing to do, but can be extremely difficult to perfect and incorporate into your gunfights. If you are unfamiliar with wall jumping, it is exactly as it sounds. You are jumping onto the wall and then jumping off of it. The reason for this is it will give you a large boost in speed in the direction you jump off of. This is amazing for opening gunfights, but I find it less useful in the middle of gunfights. If you can incorporate a wall jump at the start of a fight, you may and should be able to completely catch your enemies off guard by moving in ways they won't expect. In order to do this for the maximum effectiveness, I like to do this wall jump in the following way. You want to be sprinting at maximum speed, slide, jump in the direction of the wall that you want to wall jump off of, and as soon as you are about to run into this wall, you need to stop moving forward, so release your forward stick or key, and as you come in contact with that wall, tap the jump button. This should then launch you off of the wall in the direction you choose. This takes some practice, so be sure to try it out in the firing range at first. I recommend starting by going over to the right side of the firing range and using the sliding ramp to get an easy buildup of momentum and speed. If you do not have enough speed or momentum, this wall jump will just not do anything. Also, I like to practice this during rotations to continue to use that downtime in my games more effectively, and I recommend you do this as well. So again, just so we are clear on how to perform this, run, slide, jump towards the wall, and as you are about to come in contact with that wall, release your stick or key to move forward, hit your jump button as you come in contact with that wall, and then you will launch off that wall. While I said this is great for gunfights, it honestly is just as useful at keeping your momentum up when evading enemies or just trying to keep yourself rotating as fast as possible around the map. You won't need to use this technique in every fight or even in every game, but it is still a skill you should learn if you want to become the best of the best. I didn't mention it yet, but opening a fight with a wall jump also makes you more or less silent since you are flying through the air and not running to your opponent. Just something to keep in mind as well, this can make enemies hiding behind boxes or in a building unaware that you are literally on top of them. And on a personal note, this might be my favorite movement technique in Apex Legends due to that insane forward movement boost that you do get. Next up, let's discuss zip lines in Apex Legends. Since zip line tapping or spamming was nerfed many seasons ago, zip line traversal has really become a much easier skill to master. That being said, it is still a bit of a more intermediate skill in my eyes because it does require some finessing to get down to a T. First, the basics. When riding a zipline, be mindful of how rapidly you are jumping on and off your ziplines. Any more than three rapid taps will result in you falling off that zipline. Other than this, ziplines in my eyes are a really great tool to allow for a complete momentum shift and redirection. Players can and should tap on and off of ziplines that ascend vertically to more rapidly go from floor to floor and make yourself harder to hit. This is a fairly simple thing to do, but it is accomplished by jumping on the zipline and then tapping off it as soon as you are pointed in the direction that you would like to travel to. There are many spots on World's Edge, King's Cannon, and Olympus where you can use these ziplines to get to roofs of certain buildings and provide yourself with a quick escape from enemies that could be chasing you. Honestly though, the biggest thing for zipline travel is to stay off of them as much as possible because you are very easy to track when riding these since generally they are a very linear type of movement. A great way to make yourself harder to hit when going up a vertical zipline is by spinning around that zipline. 
A more advanced and fairly difficult skill to get down with zip lines is another thing called zip line boosting or super zip line jumping. This is accomplished by tapping the button to get on the zip line and then immediately double tapping your jump button and holding down the second jump button. If appropriately timed, this will give you a huge boost in height and speed, making you very unpredictable. And this can also be done on both horizontal and vertical zip lines as well. One final obvious tip for the zip lines is that you can reconnect and hop from zip lines to zip lines, again, making you able to redirect your movement. Certain tactical abilities such as Horizon's Lift and Pathfinder's Grapple are great ways to connect to the zip lines that may be out of reach. Our first and really only movement ability I deem to be a more an advanced type of skill to learn in Apex Legends is the type of movement called bunny hopping. First off, it is much easier to achieve a successful bunny hop on keyboard and mouse than it is controller. I am a controller player, but I highly recommend if you are a PC player to bind your jump to scroll wheel as well. When I have ventured into mouse and keyboard, I found that this makes it much easier to accomplish. However, the overall way to accomplish bunny hopping is similar on both inputs. If you are a controller player though, there's a few things you should know before we go over this. Firstly, your crouch settings will need to be set to hold in order for this to be most effective. Secondly, this is significantly easier to accomplish if you are playing with paddles. For me, I have jump and crouch bound to two of my rear paddles. There are other ways to accomplish this without paddles, such as binding jump or crouch to your stick buttons, but I have not tried this myself. This is just something to keep in mind before you venture into bunny hopping. So how do you bunny hop? The overall technique is honestly pretty simple, but it is much harder to perfect. A bunny hop is accomplished in the following way. For starters, you need to again be sprinting at maximum speed, then slide and hold your crouch button. While holding crouch, you then tap your jump button once. Do not spam it. And as you are coming back in contact with the ground again, you tap that jump button and then repeat to get the bunny hop action down. If you are moving in a straight line, you will more than likely slowly lose momentum till you had to reset. A way to avoid this is by moving from side to side in your bunny hops. This acts as a semi sideward slide and keeps your speed and momentum up, in turn letting you bunny hop for longer or even infinite amount of time. So how do you change direction when bunny hopping? For controller players, you need to be moving your left stick completely to the left or right depending on the direction you want to move. As for the right stick, you want it to slightly be angled in the direction you are moving as shown on screen. So if you are moving left, keep the left stick all the way to the left and the right stick slightly angled to the left. As you can see, this takes quite a bit of time to perfect and you won't get it right away. There's a few ways to better practice bunny hopping and get your initial skills built up. For starters, sliding down smaller hills is a great way to get a speed boost and get some momentum up, which will make bunny hopping easier to tackle. I also highly recommend you start this off by practicing with Horizon. Horizon has increased air maneuverability, which makes bunny hopping loads easier and you can keep your momentum up much easier. Another legend that does work to practice on is Octane due to his stim ability that automatically gives you a good boost in speed. At the end of the day, bunny hopping is only possible by keeping your momentum up. So when is bunny hopping really necessary? Well, the whole reason you would want to bunny hop is to make yourself harder to hit. So the best environment that caters to bunny hopping is to avoid enemy teams that may be chasing you. While it may seem cool to bunny hop all around the map, it isn't always practical and it does take a lot of effort to do so. My findings are that a simple few hops to get around a corner of a wall after a fight or while running through the open area is a great way to get some cover while being a little bit more elusive. Bunny hopping also allows you to pop a heal and then take that one or two hops behind cover before your momentum from healing is cut off. This in my eyes is really when bunny hopping is most valuable. I recommend practicing this for five to 10 minutes a day and then you will get it down in no time. The biggest mistake I find beginners make is that they are spamming the jump button. Don't do this as it will stop you from getting that slide boost between hops. It's all about timing your hop as you come back into contact with the ground. So how do you actually improve? As with most things in life, consistency is key. Take five to 10 minutes a day or before each play session and take one or two of the movement techniques that I described here that you might want to improve on and practice them in the firing range. This right off the bat will help you improve in no time. Second to this, again, like most things in life, the best way to learn is from that real in-game experience. Tell yourself that during this game or during the next few games, you're going to try to use that movement technique and use it explicitly. 
force yourself to learn and try to practice with it. Even if the scenario or engagement isn't appropriate for the type of movement or fighting style, I often do this and while I might come up short sometimes, in the long run it is worth it to be practicing and getting my mind to be thinking about engagements in different ways. If you aren't forcing yourself to try new things, there's a good chance you will be going back into your old habits that maybe aren't letting you unlock your full potential. So there we have it, the techniques and tips to get you on your way to moving like an absolute legend in Apex Legends. Honestly guys, I probably could have kept on going for another 20 to 30 minutes showing a lot of examples, but there's just so much to cover. So if you want anything covered in more depth, drop a comment down below with any questions or hop into one of my Twitch streams that are nearly daily at 8 p.m. Eastern and let's chat movement or anything Apex Legends related. Also, join the community Discord and stay in touch with myself and the community. While there are an absorbent amount of techniques and movement types in Apex Legends, hopefully this was enough to get you started to elevate you above the competition and get you on your way to mastering movement in Apex Legends. As always, thank you so much for the support. Slam that like button, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, peace out.